Hi everybody and welcome to another Saturday night here live with Pascari Fly. My name is Peter Driver. Nearly forgot to click the sound button. Uh, just remembered at last minute. Uh, how you doing, Graham Lonigan, Brennan Doolan, Zander, Gavin Howard, Arthur Windrum. Uh, hope everybody is keeping well. Everyone's had a good week. Um, I have no news really for anybody or any crack as usual. We're, we're still in the same situation, but uh, look, we're here. It's Saturday night again. These Saturday nights keep. Hi, Pascal King, Mark Godfrey. How you doing? Uh, good stuff. Thanks, Mark. Uh, hope you enjoyed the evening. Dennis Goulin is on there uh, <clears throat> as well. Good to have everybody on. Patrick Smith, hope you're all keeping well. Um, so we're going to be here for the next couple of hours. Uh, past the evening as normal. Liam Long, Raymond, Declan Noon, and Declan Smith is on there. Uh, <laughs> good man, Graham Lonigan. He says, uh, Pennies are now selling Rams. I said, there's a high demand down there, Graham, is it? Um, no problem. Donald Rafferty, glad you enjoyed it. Tom Knight, how you doing? Robbie, Robbie is on there. Robbie Manan, how you doing? Uh, Maria, David Coughlin, good evening to yourself too. Aidan Gill, Christopher Crotty, great to see so many people back on Saturday night uh, for a bit of fun, a bit of fly time and a bit of chat. So as usual, we got some absolute belters lined up for you tonight. It's uh, another week of viewers' choice and... Again, thanks so much to everybody. Uh, how you doing, ma? Ma'am's on there. Bridget Driver, how you doing, ma'am? Account to expert. Hope you're all well up there. Michael Dwyer, Aidan Gill. Um, Tom O'Connor, how you doing? <laughs> Good man, Tom. Tom's on his second week of his diet and he's up one pound. You know the easy way he's doing that, Tom? He's just don't do it at all. <laughs> just don't do it at all. Um, so, hi, Colin Healy. Eugene Fagan's on there as well. Uh, so, we got a belter. So, it's viewers' pride. Viewers... Uh, choice and um, during the week there was I was inundated uh, with requests of flies and stuff like that. Uh, different patterns people want to see, different styles of tie in, and again, looking back to them all and see what you know stuff we haven't covered before, stuff that people might find interesting, and most importantly, flies that will catch fish. Um, so we've got five for the lineup tonight. Five, hi, Craig McDonald, Christoph, Ben Holland, James Gibson. Um, uh, we got five. Um, really good, interesting patterns lined up for us tonight. Okay, uh, we got three nymphs. One is going to be for rivers. One is going to be um, one is going to be for bank fishing. Uh, one of my best nymphs for stocked rainbows, especially overfished stocked rainbows. Uh, one is for lock style for wild rainbow or for wild trout, and we got a lovely little dry fly for the river for a summer's evening fish. And we have an absolute belter of a wet fly for uh, Loch Sheelan. Um, a lot of guys on looking for... Um, <coughs> a lot of guys on... Um, yeah, Donald, let's say, Donald Rafferty's on there and he's looking for a, um, a snail pattern for Loch Lean Westmead. That's something I can put in next week, Donald. Uh, thanks, for the, thanks for the suggestion. Um so the a good few people were on to me during the week looking for dabblers. I think Hubert Smith was also on looking for long uh, size eight dabblers. So we have a size eight long shank dabbler coming up uh, later on for Loch Sheelan, one not to be missed. Um, cracking wet, cracking nymphs, little dry flies, little river nymph, and a uh, bit of fun, bit of crack. So if anybody has any comments or anything they want to share to the group, uh, if anybody has any input on fly patterns and stuff like that, uh, please show them up there in the comments box. If you know anybody that's not watching, tag their name, uh, especially some interesting patterns when we get to that sheet on pattern. And please hit that share button, share the stream for me. Uh, and let's get a bit of a crowd on here tonight. And most important of all, pour yourselves a cold one, sit back for the next couple of hours, and uh, let's let, let's get some uh, bit of a chat going and tie a few flies. So what we're going to start with is a little woven nymph. A few guys have got on to me and asked me about woven nymphs. Uh, not going to suggest by any means at all that I'm a master weaver. Can do it. Was taught very young uh, by the Polish team um, many years ago in Ratrum how to weave. And it is something, I do have a couple of woven nymphs in the box. Wouldn't be the fastest at them. There is some really good YouTube videos out there. You definitely check them out. They are lovely little flies to tie. Uh, and this is one of my favourite ones. And I do always have a selection of these in the box. So, um it, it, it's one worth having. So what I've got in device here is a um, 
Today, Christoph, I have Amandio Vino, Amandio Sauvignon Blanc there. Um, Saturday night, you're like a new glass of wine. So uh, that's what I'm on tonight. Anyway, I don't know what the rest of these are on, but uh, that's what I'm on tonight. Um, <laughs> but um, so, right, we're going to start. We got a size 18 jig hook in the vice there, and we got a 3 mil slotted gold tungsten bead on that hook. So, what we're going to start with is a little bit of primrose thread. Okay, now, when an awful lot of people are tying, um, woven nymphs. The, a, a lot of them would use um, a lot of a lot would use um, laid on the bodies and stuff like that. And I would mostly when I'm tying bigger, heavier stuff that's going to be fished on the bottom. This is more so for uh, lighter water and uh, dry dropper situations. Okay. Now, is all remember, or maybe is don't when I used um, when I used. Uh, even in Mark, even in Mario, hope you're all well. Uh, Damien O'Connor, Sarah Weld, hope you're keeping well too, Sarka. Um, so, uh, when I tied the pheasant tail with the uh, sacking material in underneath, it was lemon sacking. Okay, well, this is just another variation of that, basically, um, with, with a bit of um, a, a weave in it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is put in a little cock Leon tail there. Graham Lanigan's on the Fosters, good man, Graham. Captain Morgan's Robbie's on. Pa Captain Morgan's on Pepsi. Oh man, Robbie. So a little bit of a cocktail on tail. And tie that in there. Now when I'm generally doing a weave, the colour thread will be the same colour as the underbody of the nymph. And that just helps for me um, when I'm weaving that is if there's a slight little discrepancy in the weave that that underbody will actually um, just help make it the finished product look a little bit better. Um, so what I've got here is I've got my lemon sacking, okay? You all know that. Lemon sacking, really good stuff. Um, thanks, Michael. Um, Colin Healy's on the Morgans. Good man, Colin. <laughs> Graham Connolly's on the Sound on Bronx. Snap. So a bit of lemon sacking. We've used loads of different types of sacking over the last couple of months. Uh, this stuff is fantastic. You know, I've used it for wets, biters, nymphs, the whole lot. Um, very versatile material. And it, it is actually a nice little material to do a little weave with as well. Now, it can be a little bit slippy, which makes it a bit tricky. And this is quite a small little, um, quite a small little nymph. So... Bear with me as we, we go through this process of uh, doing a bit of So just double it up, stripped out a, a length of it, and just uh, double it up. And it's quite um, quite nice and fine as well. So it's... Uh, and it's very robust material. Tie that in, one side. Now what I'm going to use for... When a lot of guys are talking about weaving, and you, you'll see that on YouTube and stuff, a lot of them use, tend to use that. Now, don't mind the mess of that. That's, that's a pretty untidy mess. But that is um, a yarn, um, an embroidery yarn. You can get them in most sewing shops, come in a multitude of colours. And that stuff is really good for doing weaves. Um, <laughs> Robbie, absolutely. Um, well done, Lucas. Lucas was the winner of our of our show from last week we had a bit of david a bit of a uh an it crisis down there uh when when the middle of the trivia quiz i think dave has another trivia for you tonight and we got a lovely spot prize for you tonight we got a pair of our new uh fishing gloves up for grabs tonight you've seen us on facebook there during the week we got these lovely class gloves in um during the week uh brilliant gloves they got grips on the insides of them um, you know, stop rod slipping, really warm, skin tight, uh, fantastic. So they're up for grabs tonight. Dave will be along later on with a trivia for you. His winner, uh, first person with the right answer will get that. Uh, Jean-Luca fell asleep. Um, good man, Jean-Luca. But you're here now, Luca. That's the most important thing. So <clears throat> what we're going to, what we're actually going to use is a bit of Antron, uh, Antron body wool for the top of this one, okay? And here's a neat little box of Antron I got on eBay. I think I paid about 10 euros for it. Um, many moons ago and you can see a lovely selection of colors in there um lovely selection of colors in there uh really really handy stuff and what i do is i take out a piece of the dark brown and because it's such a small nymph the antron and it's a full piece of antron will be way too um way too heavy so uh, hi dylan roberts is on there from wedge days again uh so what i do is i strip out some of that okay strip out some of the fibers Get it much, much lighter. Just, just pull them out. Dump some of those. And once I get it to the right kind of thickness that I want, uh, what I do then is I wet it. 
And this makes it very easy to work with. Get it a bit damp. It'll help it from slipping too much. Um, hi, Desmond is on there. Desi's on there. Desi, thanks a million for the video last week. Uh, you crossed my mind several times during the week, but I, I had an absolute mental week um, with kids and everyone else, so I just didn't get a chance to, to give you a shout. But really appreciate it last week. It went down fantastic. Hi, Estevan. Um, so wet it a bit. Just helps. Makes it a bit more ploy up. Makes it a bit more. Stops from slipping a little bit and uh, helps it keep together. And uh, I just have one piece here now that I actually got it perfect earlier on. And um, what I'm going to do is just tie that in over here on the other side. I say normally if we're doing weaves on larger hooks, we put a bit of a lead under body there. It would be quite a larger body and stuff like that. Um, but this is probably my most popular woven nymph that I would use. So I said I'll stick to this one. A little bit more tricky, smaller body, much narrower body in diameter. So it makes the little bit of a weave a little bit a little bit tricklier. Um but uh nonetheless very effective, very simple. So once you've got those tied in, I'm just gonna come back up over that little dark spot on your side of the camera that I didn't see. And you know weaving you can do a multitude like an absolute multitude of color combination olives yellows and stuff like that um beautiful little flies a little bit of practice needed absolutely whip finish off your tying thread and take that away for a moment you can't do a uh, weave with tying thread when you do take it off leave a good long uh, piece of tying thread sticking out of whatever thread bobbin you're going to use next we're going to be going into the kevlar after that um, and leave it nearby within arm's reach you're going to need that when we get to the end of the weave um Christoph, I have a little bit of jungle crack Christoph. Um just a little bit. Um it's okay if you want to give me a bell tomorrow, Christoph, and uh we can have a little bit of chat. That's absolutely no problem. So give me a little buzz and um give me a little buzz and we can we can we can have a chat. Okay, so it's gotta move a bit size. So it's a bit awkward. Normally what I do is I turn the voice into my chest, turn it upside down, I don't have a camera and I also have a lot more hand room. Than I do here. Now I was looking today at reorganizing the cameras a bit, but for the duration of the show, it would have made it a little bit uh, messy. How are you doing, Jerry? Jerry Morgan is on there with us. A uh, little bit messy, so bear with me. I've got very limited hand space here, and uh, but I'm still going to give you the best visible option that I can on doing a little bit of um, brilliant stuff. Dominic, well done. Congratulations, Dominic. Flies from the week, last week arrived him as well. Don't forget, winners tonight. I'm going to ask a question or the, tomorrow mo, tomorrow mo, day at some, some tomorrow morning at some stage or midday i will ask a question based on tonight whoever answers that question correctly first uh wins the flies tie tonight and the couple i did prior to the show um so going to do a little bit of weave so i said it's not something i've overly fast with but yet it's the technique that i want to talk to you about more so than the finished product there are some fantastic weavers out there I'm not one of them, okay? So no one be under any illusions. I'm trying to really be a master weaver, okay? So in my right hand, I've got the underbody. In my left hand, I've got the, the, the topping. And what I'm going to do is come over with the underbody, sweep around under the fly with the topping, then fold back over with the underbody, or with the topping, should I say, and then back over with the underbody. And basically, I'm going to continue that process. Now, one of the key things about doing a weave is the tension on those, the tension on the, um, the two pieces of material that you're using. That tension, you're, you're adjusting it constantly, trying to keep the joints of where the two of them in some form of straight line up the side of the hook. So, and you can adjust it, but once you've made... Uh, the loop around you can either pull on the you now my hand is kind of in the way so you can see there where i've got one piece down a little bit lower so if i pull the lemon it comes up a little bit if i pull the brown it moves up a little bit okay so you see that as i pull either side i can adjust it and i can also pull it back down the fly a bit there a little bit so we get them bodies to we get the um the back into to make sure it's overlapped okay so you can adjust it as you do it take your time Work your way up the fly. We can do a little bit of adjusting on it. So as you can see, there's one little bit of a gap. If there is, 
And I say, I'm in a bit of an awkward position here to do it. Uh, and it's more the technique I want to talk to you about. I'll actually just uh, get stuck into it now in a second. And then, um, so if you need to do a little bit of an undo, do. <clears throat> Go back a step or two. And it's kind of one of those things that once you get your hand, it's, it's like, if that happens, don't worry about it. That's okay. We can go back to the start and I'll just, I'll just run through it here. <clears throat> it's like double hauling and like that. Once you get your hand hand motions uh, in sync, you know, you will run them off much faster. You will run them off much faster. And um, the more you do, the better and faster you will become, like anything. A little bit awkward doing it now. On the side like this, but sure. I hope you're all getting a good visual of what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, let's snap on. And let just turn this voice just a little bit more towards me. Now this would be a really good stay a point to have. Here's one I done earlier. Now might be a bit better. A little bit more hand room there away from the camera. So good tension. What's actually happening here to me is something now you never would have thought would happen. I actually put on an awful lot of hand cream during the days of when I'm doing Saturday nights because uh, close up camera and I do a very rough skin. I've mentioned it before. And what's happening is, is all the bloody stuff is slipping in my hand. And I'm losing the tension on the um, I'm losing the tension on the two pieces of material because they're slipping so much. But anyway, <laughs> Graham Connolly, buying power marker, absolutely, yeah, 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 um, absolutely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my hands there for a second out, guys, and I'm going to get some of that crap off my hands and just make my fingertips a little bit drier. It's good to show this, you know, don't ever be um, flustered or don't ever be, um, <clears throat> yeah, no, Sarah or Soka, I don't actually stop those pro markers, unfortunately, but don't ever be, you know, put off by... Things like this happen. It happens to absolutely everyone. There's times when I'm tying dabblers. There's times when I'm tying normal nymphs. Tread breaks. Things break. Um, there, it is absolutely a part of fly tying. That will never leave you. Is little uh, things like that. Of things going wrong. Slipping. Um, The joy is a flight train. Still slipping a good bit, but sure. Once we get up to the bead, that's close enough for a moment. We still have a brown top, a light underbody, two or two three little weaves gone. That's that's okay. I'm not going to waste any more time on uh, getting that absolutely perfect. It's from here on, then you got to hold the tension and put in your Kevlar thread. Keeping the tension on those two waist pieces, swap over and put on a couple of turns over the top. Weave is not 100%, but you know what? In the conditions that, that my hands are in right now, for the purpose of the demonstration, it'll do. And I bet you it'll still catch fish. Okay, so once you've your weave done, your little weave, um, once you've your little weave done, you can just... 
uh, just a slight little bit. There's one particular weave there now that just slipped around a little bit. That's, you know, it's a fly thing. Now, we're going to just split a little bit of thread here. Yeah, absolutely, Tim. Yeah, so much easier. Um, thanks for that, Marek. Um, <clears throat> I'll remember in future not to put on any Neutrogena hand cream before I do weaving. Um, but anyway, look at you saw the technique. And I, I admit it right from the start. I'm not a, a master weaver. I have done a bit over the years. Uh, it is. A, this is a fly. I do have. A dozen of them in the box at all times. Um, sit down at least one day a year and do these. So just split me Kevlar. Going to put in a little bit of UV Fox Squirrel there. I just give it a little spin. <laughs> Man, Dylan. Yeah, well, look, that's not the best. I have another one there I can show you that I actually... Um, I did one earlier on, but I also, you know... I'm going to say I purposely didn't practice uh, weaving... Uh, to show that it's a um, little bit of a uh, UV fox squirrel behind the bead. We'll finish that off. Take away your thread. And I'm going to put just a little bit hot spot of Tommy Fly between that fox squirrel and the bead. This is number 14. So if anyone has any comments or um, any comments or questions or anything, please feel free to fire them across. Um, fortunately, I don't get to see everyone's comments because obviously the screen in front of me um, when I'm tying, I don't get to see it all that. So a um, little bit of varnish on the Tommy fly thread. And then just whip it in behind that bead. That there is a great little nymph. Not the best weave in the world, but you can see what we got. A brown back, yellow underbody, a little bit of fox squirrel. A um, little bit of fox squirrel. Just going to adjust that camera a little bit just to get it a bit more centered for you. And um, a little bit of fox squirrel. Um, and it's uh, an absolute fantastic river nymph. I uh, have been fishing it for a long, long, long time. Um, and it's uh, definitely one for that. There's a little bit of a better weave on that one. One I just did before I came on. As you can see, much, evener, much more even on both sides. That's the way it should have looked. And I hadn't put on the Neutrogena hand cream at that stage, and it was much more controlled. But that little, um, yeah, Graham Connolly would if you wanted. If you want to, uh, Graham, uh, do a Mayfly body we woven, uh, do a video and send it on to us, Graham, for next week, will you? <laughs> I'm, I tell you now, you look at weaving is it's one of those things. After five or six flies, you're certainly going to get a lot faster at them, and a hell of a lot, um, a hell of a lot better. But that's that's that one's pretty good there that we did earlier on before I put on the, the hand cream. Um, you can see. Far much better uh, weave on it, um, and obviously great tip. Is we've all just learned tonight, and it's you know it's one thing about fly fly tying, fly fishing is you learn something new every day. Um, one for the box, Luca. One for the box, absolutely, absolutely. But um, is don't don't put on any hand cream before you do any uh, weaving because you just slip because you're using your hands and there's no tread bobbins or anything like that to to keep the tension. But a great little nymph, guys and girls. Um, Really, really good little nymph and a really good fish catcher, that one. And uh, one to kick us off tonight. One to kick us off. I was going to leave that one a little bit later, but I knew it wasn't going to be the, the prettiest thing I've ever tied for you. Um, you know what, Tony? Jesus, I tell you now. I do have them. I have them in the box. Um, do I... Would, if, would, would a woven nymph work any better than non-woven of the same colours? So I... I I remember a couple of, it could be even a couple of months ago, I tied a pheasant tail with that, um, I tied a pheasant tail with um, the, the, the lemon, and um, you know what, 
it, that's that's a really go to fly for me. Um, the woven one is, geez, I, I can't say yes and I can't say no. Um, there's times where it does work. Definitely in a caddis situation, caddis pupae down deep size, you know, 14, 12 um, is definitely. I know Terry Phillips. Terry Phillips is on there. Actually, uh, anyone doesn't know Terry, guys, he's an English international um, and a, a fantastic flight player. Terry has a YouTube channel there and he actually has a fantastic woven nymph, a real top comp pattern. Thanks for sharing that, Terry. Um, a real top comp pattern there. Well worth watching. Um, that little comp. And that, that's another nymph I actually woven if I have in the box. Uh, is that one, Terry? It was a great toy. I actually watched that, um, watched your video there yesterday, Terry, and uh, really good YouTube channel. So if anybody's into your YouTube, go on there and, and check out Terry Phillips. Um, he's got some cracking stuff on there. Um, but yeah, yeah, so Terry said it's, it's a great pattern for coarse fish. Um, and would it be the brown and the yellow, Terry? I'm really intrigued with that now um, by, by you saying coarse fish. So is that color combination, Terry, um, or is it just generally woven nymphs that you find really good for coarse fish? Or is it that, that nymph that you tie on your YouTube channel, that woven uh, nymph? And I know that one is very popular amongst competition anglers. Um, is that one that you would find one of your best nymphs for, for uh, coarse fish? I'd be really intrigued to hear your. Um, I'd be really intrigued to hear your opinions and thoughts on that one, Terry. Uh, <clears throat> okay, let's move on. That's that one out of the way. Going to have a little drink now for myself, lads. Cheers to everyone, and uh, hope everyone's having a good Saturday night. <laughs> uh, just uh, <clears throat> Graham Connolly's on there having a bit of banter. So, what am I going to move on to next? Next, I'm going to move on to. Um, Okay, so Terry's on there and he says, Chub love that, that brown and yellow combination. That's good to know. Good to know. Thanks for that, Terry. Appreciate it. So we're going to move on to another little nymph. Okay. Now this one is, by a country mile, the best nymph um, I have for stocked rainbows, overwinter stocked rainbows. I think Graeme Reggie Reynolds was on there. Uh, <clears throat> not sure if you're on there tonight, Graeme. Um yeah, do you know what, Tony? That's something that we might look at, at a dace catcher. Yeah, we might look at a dace catcher next week. Um, so, um, Kieran Flaherty, barbless dry fly hooks for a lake. You'll be looking at um, either the 301 or the, the DO4. Give me a shout tomorrow on that one. Um, go hand the stock, he says Dennis Golden. Right. So, Dennis, this is one night fishing rat con regularly. <coughs> This is one I fish in Ratcon regularly. It has probably cost me, caught me most of my fish in Ratcon over the last four or five seasons in the AWOL Winter League. It is, there's no way I would go to Ratcon without a dozen of these in the box. Uh, I know a few years ago when I met you at the start, Dennis, I give you a little hair's ear nymph. Well, this is a move on from that particular pattern. Uh, I find hair's ear nymphs can be very effective. And I know a good few guys that are fishing hair's ear nymphs on the likes of Leash Anglin, said a Ratcon and places like that hard you know place that are well fished and um they can be very effective and this is this is one now that i certainly wouldn't be going to a bank fishery without a stack of these in my box not a complicated toy nice toy but uh apparently i just want to share which is all <laughs> Dennis, there no to do. okay so we got a uh three oh two size 12 in device i got a three mil copper Tungsten bead on there. Now I'd normally fish this. If I was not rack on, I would normally fish this on its own on about 15 foot leader. Um, sometimes I might fish too, but um, most of the time it'll be on its own. If I'm on a, a, a fishery that has been well hammered and um, not looking to pick up big numbers, I will actually uh, fish this on its own. So I'm just putting in a, bit, a little bit of fine red holographic there on that um, as a tag. Going to wrap that around. Now, the red holographic I'm using is by Hens. It's a very fine one. And you can use a wider one. But what I find with a lot of the other red holographics I have is that it, uh, how you doing, Paul Cal? It is that, it, you know, when it gets air a bit of um, abuse at all, that the holographic can very quickly come off. A lot of spools of holographic that you, you can buy uh, doesn't really stay on. Where this hen's holographic, like the entire fly will fall apart before this loses its color. So it's um, it's a really good holographic material. 
Uh, bit fine, unfortunately. So a few extra wraps on there and things like that. But really intense, lovely colour. Uh, kind of a darkish kind of red. And um, I, I love it. It's fantastic. Very strong and holds its colour very well. It's very important. Uh, so once I got that in there, I'm going to then tie in a bronze mallard. Yeah, Robert Flaherty, I totally agree with you. UTC red holographic is not good at all. Um, not good. It, you know, it loses colour very quickly. If you give that a bit of a brush or a bit of, you know, a bit of, um, a bit of, or a bit of abuse at all, the, the holograph, the, the flash comes, or, the, you know, it turns silver. So when you're buying your holographic or tinsels, you know, choose a, a brand that's been tried and tested. Um, definitely that hens, it's a, it's, it comes in a, it comes in a shank, quite fine as you can see, um, quite fine. Well, it has a lovely deep red. How are you doing, Jason Foran? Yeah, and that too, Robert Flaherty appeals. Uh, that's a really, I say, the only bad thing about it is it's so fine. But hey, look at I'll put up with that. A couple of extra, few, few extra seconds to wrap it. Um, I get a lovely butt or I get a lovely um, tag or whatever it's going to be. So a little bit of bronze mallard in there is the tail. Now I'm going to put in some of my copper sulky for a rib. Not too bad, Jason Foreign and yourself. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Um, looking forward to getting into next month. Thank God February's here. January's almost over. Get into next month and uh, please God, we'll start to, you know, hear a few lads catching a few fish and things will start looking up. We'll get a little bit of an extension in the evenings. See it thinking, um, see it, um, see it kind of, they were leaving us stretching out a little bit and, you know, a little bit of better weather and stuff like that and get closer to that season. Unfortunately, we don't open up here till March. So just a little bit of hairs here. We don't open up here till March, uh, pa St. Patrick's Day. But, you know, looking forward to that. And get to the river, please, God. And so going to put on a bit of a body on this. And I'm going to rib it. Now, I'm going to rib it quite close with that copper rib. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of copper going in there. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. Jason says, or, or, Graham, or sorry, um, Graham Lonergan saying they're the 15th down on the Blackwater. Uh, yeah, you're lucky, lucky guys. You ever get on the 15th? Normally, I would be heading down to the Blackwater. Uh, normally, I would be heading down to the Blackwater to do a fish. Now I can give this a bit of a brush. And now, if I was using... Some of them other brands of holographic. At this stage now, my butt would be gone silver. After giving this a bit of a... So I just want to get those fibres to come out. So when that gets lovely and matte wet, uh, when that gets lovely and, and wet, it's going to... Those little uh, ribs are going to come through uh, beautifully through that fly. Okay. What we're going to do then is take a little bit of... Um, as I always what I always put my hairs here. Is some um, UV fox squirt, a little bit of a mixture of makeup myself, and I'm going to lash that in there. Throw in another little bit. Lovely, lovely job. So how has everyone else's week been? Anybody got any great exciting news? I see Jason Corcoran. Jason, if you're on there tonight, congratulations. Blackwater Trout and Salmon down there is now Blackwater Trout and Salmon Lodge. Jason um, Jason got uh, acquired himself a B&B right on Cable Island. Fantastic fishery. Uh, I'm sure will be a fantastic host. Uh, he'll, he's going to be up now for the next couple of months, 7 o'clock in the morning, every morning. That's practicing cooking the fries and uh, all that kind of stuff, making beds. And all that kind of stuff, getting ready for all his, his uh, clients that are going to be down there and staying over with Jason. What a great fishery. Uh, make sure you give him a shout. Um, support. Support him. Great to see uh, him taking on the venture. Fantastic. That's it. That's as simple as it is. That is an absolute cracker here. Um, for, for, I say, you know, hard cut rainbows. I have a couple of lures and stuff like that. But as regards to Nymph, that fished on its own. Rat Con, Leash Angling Centre. 
is one of my top new patterns. Uh, and uh, Patrick McCarthy, I would have fished it. Patrick, I'd put that up in a floating line. I might put it even up in a clear glass, um, slow, intermediate, or fast, intermediate. And I would mix it up. I would figure of eight. I would couple of little togs. It depends. All depends on the day and what way the fish want it. Uh, what kind of pace do you want it? Sometimes I'll even hang another on bung. But um, now I'm sure... Um, I'm sure it's it, it, you have no problem catching trout on a river with that either. Um, but a very simple little hare's ear pattern, definitely something I wouldn't be going on to a stock fishery without. Um, absolutely fantastic uh, pattern fished in along by the, the banks of Rackon, and you will definitely um, pick up some of those uh, well-wintered fish. Um, and I've had fish abroad on that too. That is, it's not just an Irish pattern that I would have. It's, it's, it's one I would have um constantly with me abroad so um hope hope that one gets us all out of a hole has got me out of um absolutely glint Jen Luca, working well in the river that one's got me out of a hole a few times um on, on stock fisheries um so fantastic i'll tell you a very similar one and uh, what i actually tie in as a tail then sometimes is if i have a bit there to show you i do i have a little bit here because we're going to be needing it for our little dry fly next and uh, what i do is i take some rabbit a bit off a of rabbit skin uh deck on it no it's fantastic trout uh there as well deck i spent a little bit of time down there over the last two years Declan with jason we did a few master classes and stuff like that and we'll have more master classes coming up um please god at some stage this year coming for trout and stuff like that and there's a, there's fantastic trout fishing down there Declan. um absolutely fantastic trout fishing down there there's a tail that i put on it as well so that's a little bit of rabbit taken off the body it's nice and long and I'd often tie that in there as a tail as well. Okay, same pattern with a tail. What you'll get with that tail is a little bit more movement. As you can see, it gets quite slim and quite fine. There's a lovely kind of um, color color kind of combination there between the light tan and the, and the dark gray uh, coming up into the body. And that thing will, will move will move fantastically in the water. So sometimes I'll tie the very same thing with that extra long tail if they want that little bit of movement in the nymph. Um, but that one there is definitely one, guys, that um, really wanted to share with you tonight. A few people were asking for something that will catch hard-caught fish in a few of the fishers around Ireland, and uh, I thought you might enjoy that one. So that's another one for uh, tomorrow's winners. So moving on next, we're going to do a little... Um, we're going to do a little dry fly for the river. So a few people were asking about different dries and stuff like that. Um, and I was kind of looking at different ones. There was, there was loads of great suggestions. Uh, we'll do some more next week. But what we're going to do tonight is a great little fly um, called the Grey Flag. Just, it's a lovely, simple little dry fly. I remember fishing it a lot as a young lad growing up. It was one of those 24 patterns that were always in Jerry Powers, in our club, Power Sound, Tackle Shop. And you went in and you bought one or two of every one of them. Um, when, you're, when you're getting ready for the fishing season. And a grey flag is one of them. A great evening fly uh, for for a sage. Um, and I'm just looking around here now to see where have I got everything for that. Right, so. We're going to get cracking on this one here. Now. Dave, have you asked your question yet? I don't think he has. Um. <laughs> yeah absolutely Dennis it's been a long time when someone suggested two people actually got on to me and said any chance you'd tie a grey flag I know it's another one of those patterns that jeez you know caught so many fish in the 80s and 90s for so many people that you just look you know very rarely you look into someone's box now and see a grey flag um, when you see a, you know very rarely you'll see a grey flag and what, what a fly I remember Fishing rat from trout anglers and rat from trout anglers, you know, they had um, they always have seven or eight river evening competitions there and some great crack like real social competitions, social competitions. And uh, you know, you wouldn't go down to an evening competition on rat from on the Avonmore without a grey flag and um, a uh, silver sedge. Silver sedge was the other one. I was going to try a silver sedge tonight. I said, No, I'll leave that for another week. Uh, grey flag and silver sedge for an evening rise. Um, um, <clears throat> it's um, you know, you just have to have them. So why we we you know we don't fish them anymore? A lot of it, I think, it is too because we use an awful lot of tapered leaders and hackled dry flies. Do tend to f um, the hackled dry flies um, 
So I haven't seen a hatch in years yet. Jeez, oh, I know when was the last time I even saw the hatch. But I bet you if you went down a river on a, on a nice evening's dry uh, rise, you would um, you would certainly catch on a great flag. What a, what a great pattern. What a great old, old pattern. Uh, not 100% sure on the history of it. If anybody has any history of it there. Uh, yeah, Dennis, absolutely. You can read that in Peter Riley's book there. The Liffey is renowned for its great flags. Um, you know, and it is, it's a it's a lovely, lovely fly. Uh, so we're going to tie one of them here now to the best of my ability anyway, folks. So uh, bear with me. So a little bit of Kevlar there. In there, I've got a 302 or a DO4 size 14 uh, dry fly hook. Going to do it on a 14. 14, 16s and even 12s um, is what we would have. What I, I wouldn't have, unfortunately, I will have. But I, at the moment, I don't have a grey flag in my box. Um, for the rib... You can either use a very fine oval tinsel, um, which is not, you know, the, the uni oval small is too heavy um, for this size of a hook. So I use a very fine, a very fine silver wire. Let me tie that in there. Yeah, absolutely. Jason Farn is on there as well. The, the white moth is another fly that, geez, I can remember as a young lad growing up. Fishing white moths. Oh my god, just on the edge of dark. And it used to be just carnage. Like, you know, I am probably it's all very it's a lot of romanticism too, you know. And I think an awful lot of us get caught up in that is that, you know, when you think back to them days and you know, even my dad would be the same when he's you know, we're sitting down having a chat about the river and, and days gone by, and he'd be saying, God, back in the sixties and the fifties and the forties, the trout and and even now I would say, God, back in the nineties and the eighties, the trout we used to catch was unbelievable. Um, you know, um, that um, you know, it's a little bit of romanticism, but but I remember the white moth. Oh, it used to be just unbelievable. Like again, you, you'd never see any of those. Anymore. So what I'm doing here is I've got a little bit of under fur from a rabbit patch. So you can see that's the patch of rabbit, and what I'm taking is this this kind of under fur here, uh, and using that snipped away a bit, rather than that long tan stuff. Uh, it's dark grey. Also, um, also very good for this pattern is grey hair and quill. Uh, put in a little bit of grey hair in there is also very good. So I'm just softening up this little bit of rabbit. The original pattern is uh, grey rabbit under fur. Martin, that's a very good point. Martin Fennessy is just saying there, if anybody has seen that message, that the Bloom Caddis has uh, kind of done away with a lot of these. Um... <clears throat> How you doing, Peter? Peter Doherty's there and he's saying, yeah, no, no, no grey, um, no grey flags left on the Liffey. Um, I suppose, uh, Dave is on there with his question, folks. First person in with the correct answer wins the prize. The question is, what name is also given to the male urn blue dun? Raymond is on there and saying the alder fly is another fly that has disappeared um, from, from the Kells Blackwater. Uh, and it, I think that's the story of most rivers around the country, is that a lot of these magnificent flies um, aren't being seen anywhere anymore. Um. And it is a shame what beautiful flies they are. Um, I can remember. I, I'm sure on the, on the Avamore, if I went up now, and we used to have a great, uh, we used to have a great um, hatch of silver sedges on the Avamore. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, you'd get your spot picked out there seven, eight o'clock at night, and you'd sit in there and wait till just that rise hits on. And then <clears throat> next thing they'd come on. And if you had half a dozen silver sedges in your box, you were going to have a, a fairly tasty evening. Um, so the body hackle to this is a um, the body hackle to hackle to this is a silver badger, okay. So I have a little bit of silver badger saddle here. Now, if you don't have a saddle, you can use a uh, cock, uh, cape, nick, and I'm going to just put a little small. So Dave has his question up there, guys. If anybody hasn't seen it, what other common name is given to the male iron blue dun? So I'm just going to rib that down, rib that back up, should I say. Lots of answers coming in there. And just hide it off. So Dave, whenever you get your 
Whenever you get your, your correct answer, Dave, let me know. And we will send out a pair of those lovely new gloves. They're fantastic. Um, fantastic job. And they're that real ultra or that real um, drying material. <coughs> Excuse me. That real good drying material that if they get wet, they dry in, in seconds. And um, there's no, you know, they're, they're not, they don't uh, kind of, what would you say? Be too tight in the hands or too heavy in the hands. Very light material. So that's our, our body hackle on the grey flag. Um and what I'm going to do now is a wing. Okay, so we're going to use a bit of hen pheasant here for this. Now, there's a couple of different ways that I'm sure everyone will put on this wing. I have my own way. I'm going to do that way now in a second. You can do a paired wing if you want. Probably not the traditional way. Uh, I think Davy McPhail does an excellent very uh, um, attempt at doing that four layer or the double layer of um, dark hen pheasant, which is that kind of color there. And that's what I like in a great flag is that dark hen pheasant wing. Okay. You can see this one here from the opposite side is not quite as dark. Okay, so I normally use. Um... So we have a winner. Dave Tui is correct. The Jenny Spinner is also another name for the male iron blue dome. Well done, um, common name. Well done to um, Dave Tui. He was the first one in. Dave, those lovely gloves are on the way to you. I'll get them out to you Monday morning. When you wear them, they'll keep the old hands nice and. Um, Nice and dry and warm, heading up on the heading up on the, the barrow there at the start of the season. So you can do a paired wing. Now I'm gonna actually do both. I'm gonna do two ways this because someone was asking me, a few actually guys were on asking me about paired wings during the week. And um well I wasn't going to I didn't really have plans to do a paired lake a paired wing on a on a lake fly, but I said I was going to do a sage pattern for the river. So I'm gonna just kind of go through the motions of a um go through the motions of doing a paired wing on this one and then i'm actually going to do the wing i normally use on it okay so once you've see when you select your you know one thing about wings doing hen pheasant wings they're not the most they're not the most difficult of wings to do the material is fairly robust they marry well together um but you know by good head by good hen pheasant wings um Good quality hen pheasant wings will certainly help. Snip off your your you know your uh, little little piece of the the feather, both equal on, on opposite feathers, and place them on top of each other till you get that. Okay. Now, when I'm starting to tie my wing, I make sure my tread is as far back up towards the body as it can be possibly be. Okay, and I place that in on top. I like saw so with that finger till I get it right exactly where I want it. Make sure it's sitting down in between the hackle. I then swap hands. I grab the hook and the feather all in that hand. Okay, sitting on top of the hook. Now I catch the thread, come up, pinch, and I don't pull down. If you pull down, there is a chance that that wing will flick, flick over to the side, which happens for an awful lot of people, or it'll curl, it'll roll up. Okay, what you do is you catch the thread and you pull straight up, like so. Straight up, don't let go of the wing, don't let go of anything. Couple of turns down the hook, and your wing sits in perfect for you every time, right at top. Okay, now if you tie that wing too close to the hook, and when you do the initial pull up, every turn of tread after that must be towards the eye, it can't go back up onto the wing, it will then cause the wing to roll over, either lie flat on its side or actually. Um, or actually roll up in itself okay so from then on every turn now i put will be towards the eye so that's why we get our tread back up as far as we can away from the eye do that initial turn there and then everything coming down along we will um we will we will use tying other materials or finish the fly whatever and then that that wing will always say perfectly on top of that fly sitting into the hackle lovely whatever way you want it or whatever length you desire um, and I hope that's a good enough explanation for all those guys that were looking at paired wings. Uh, I'm sure there's there's great great tires out there. Dave Tui, uh, Dennis Gould, and all those guys. Paul Malloy, Mick McShane that do do absolutely magnificent flies. Craig McDonald, all those guys. Um, <clears throat> some of their wing wing and wing and techniques are absolutely fantastic. I'm not. I've always kind of struggled with wings as well myself, but that's the way I've always found to you know achieve a decent enough wing. Definitely, the quality of materials will make a difference. Um, you know, so when you're buying hen pheasant, um, 
Choose really good hen pheasant, and that's your winging material. Now I'm going to go on to the way I do this uh, wing for this one, okay? So I've got me nice dark, um, I've got me nice dark um, hen pheasant here, secondary feather, and I'm going to take out about a good inch of that. And what I'm going to start doing is starting to stroke it out a little bit, getting those tips to line up. Now I might need a little bit more after this, okay? So I'm going to take that inch, and I'm going to snip it off. Now I'm not going to roll it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try and get you a visual on this one here. Uh, is I'm going to take away a quarter of an inch and I'm going to stack it. So I'm going to have three or four pieces of that nice dark hen pheasant. Now I say, this is the way I do it folks. It's not, um, I'm sure there's plenty of other tires out there have different ways. This is the way I was doing it for years. So what I've got is a nice stack now of um, hen pheasant. Okay, nice dark hen pheasant sitting on top of that. And I'm going to place that before I actually do place it. I'm actually just going to give that a little brush back. I want some of them top hackles to be nice and soft. And just sit back a little bit so we can get this down on top of that fly. Place it on top. And you can put a little bit of varnish or a little bit of flugu or something like that there to make that uh, hold its shape a little bit better. But I'm normally never too worried about it. Now, as you can see, I didn't really do a pinch and pull down. I just lo slowly started to loosen around it. And that's the wing I'm looking for. See that, man? It's almost like a little um, triangle sitting down in on top of the fly. There's four layers there. I want it sitting, but I want it kind of off a little bit. I just want to come past, a little bit past that shank of oak. But I want that kind of V shape, that lovely sedge wing shape on top of it. Okay. The one thing I find about if you flew goo, hen pheasant, stuff like that, it gets very narrow and it's just look at it, it's it's gonna it's gonna get messy after your first throw on it anyway. So um but that initial shape will stay uh, a little bit. Uh, get in there and just trim away your waist. Hold the wing, couple more turns. Secure it all in place. And we're ready then to do our hackle. Thanks, Raymond. Dave, the Dave, this Dave Donovan's just standing there and he's saying he's doing a very similar. Um, now I'm going to put a little shoulder hackle on that. Now, in theory, you're supposed to, according to all the the uh, experts, that sh the shoulder hackle should be a little bit bigger than the body hackle. Um, when I was growing up tying grey flags, I had one hackle, and that was it. Sometimes I didn't have a choice. So I used the same. What I used on the body goes onto the head. Silver badger. If you have a saddle, it's great, because you can see the length of that feather that I'm using there now. It makes life so easy to tie dries. Um, really does. Um, you know, and it, it just, just helps, like, it really helps so much. You can really get great quality finish in your hackles and your dries. Uh, if you don't, you can use, I say, a nick, uh, cock nick. Not going to say it's a little more difficult, but it just, you know, it takes a little bit more work. Snip away your waist. A little bit of a whip finish. And there we go. That there's a little grey flag. And when I was at home fishing the Avermore River and all those evening competitions. Between that and some other night along the way, we'll do a silver sedge. Um, we'll do a silver sedge. You can see that wing actually just didn't. That needs to marry a little bit better. But that's okay. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's it. That's my take on a... Um, On a uh, grey flag, Michael Michael Callahan was on there looking for that as well, I think, uh, during the week. So, Michael, I hope that um, did you a bit of justice and you enjoyed it. And I uh, hope the rest is uh, go out there and tie a little grey flag for yourselves. And let's see, you know, I still reckon that'll catch a fish. 
whether the hatch is on the river or not anymore, I wouldn't mind having that in my on my cast going down on a June or July summer's evening. We can look forward to those days, please God. June, July, summer's evening there, eight o'clock, you're heading down after a feed of spuds and you're waddling down along the river bank and you get in there at your leisure and you you know, sit on the bank and set up the cast and you're watching a few trout rise and then just on the edge of the arc they come on and they get into that frenzy and you get up and with your dry flying, you know. Um Miles, that is silver badger. Silver badger, that that hackle is called. Um that's it, you can see if can give you a really good look at it. That's it there. Silver badger. Okay. Um Thanks, Eugene. Um Dave Two Wee Sally, some boys are still using them in size twelves on on Enel. Absolutely. I'd, I'd say they'd work too. Um but uh there you go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed that one. Um hope everyone is having a good Saturday night. Uh we got some really good um we got some really good patterns still to come up. What time are we now? Half nine. We still got two more to go. If anybody has any questions or queries or comments or wants to add in, um, please do give us a shout here. Uh, it's all a bit of crack and a bit of fun. And i um, glad to see so many people online. We have a really um, interesting fly coming up for uh, Loch Sheelan. And we've got another interesting Loch Style nymph coming up next um, that I would use constantly on Loch Ool. And Loch Lean. Not that I fish Loch Lean too often, but I have caught some fish on Loch Lean. I know other people have caught a lot of fish on Loch Lean with the next pattern that's coming up. And uh, I caught my biggest ever trout on Loch Ool with it around Church Island. But uh, that's a good bit of go. Robbie Feel and myself wrote one day. Um, thanks for that, James. Thanks, Miles. Um, oh, Graham Lanigan, what's my biggest brown on the river? Uh, look at how, how broad I've got some, you know, three, four pound fish. Um, I'm never really, you know, I, I think for me, for one, as a competition angler, I'm more into numbers than, than size. I'm not really a trophy hunter. Um, and, you know, some of the best fish that I remember in my time is not really the size. It, it's how they were caught. You know, if, if I had to make a, a really difficult cast or it was a really awkward take and, I, you know, it was it was an awkward strike and managed to land and you go, how did, how did I manage that? So, you know, when I'm out fishing, the fish I remember... Is probably you know something that I caught that I seem to surprise myself. I managed to catch it, um, more so than the size. Probably three or four pound, I would say, would be biggest out of Slovenia and places like that. And um, Italy, you, you can get those fish. Um, on Ireland in Irish rivers, not that big. Probably around two, two and a half pound would be my biggest fish claim. Um, plenty of other rivers out there that have a lot bigger fish. But um, there we go. Maybe maybe this year, maybe this year we'll get something a little bit more um, a bit more meat on. We'll see. So we're gonna move on. And we are going to do this lovely nymph here now next. This is one of my favorites. I love this thing. Um, beautiful nymph. <coughs> very, very effective on the given day. Fished as part of a tree fly team. And um, always fished on a point. Tony Regan has a question there. What's the difference between Italian and standard parachutes? Gianluca will. Um, I have some of it there, Gianluca. I think I have a saddle of it there, but I met saddle. Um, if anybody wants any silver badger, give me a shout tomorrow and um, I'll see what I have in the shop below. Um, so, what I've got in the voice there is a B830 uh, long shank size 10. Okay, and that's what we're going to use for. Um, that's what we're going to use for, for our nymph power. No bead on this one, no weight. I don't want weight at it. Um, okay, tiny thread. So, a bit of Kevlar. I'm going to start off. Flash on a good base there. Make sure your thread is well attached. What I find, and I do it myself too, is that when I'm working on these longer shank hooks, I tend to skip wraps. You know, I'd really lash it on fast to cover more space. And what ends up happening is when you get halfway through the fly, then you put a bit of tension onto something. Um, next thing, the whole body spins around because you didn't put the proper base in there. So when you're putting a base on the long shank, take those extra couple of seconds and make sure there's a good base. That's what's going to hold all your materials in position when you have it all on and you look to put that bit of pressure on to tie something in like a rib or the end of a body or whatever. And uh, you go to put the, the pressure on it and next thing the whole thing spins around the hook because your under your tread underbody is not attached properly basically. Okay. Um we're gonna have a two part tail on this one. We have some glow bright number twelve. And we're gonna take off a little bit of that. Okay. 
and I want four, no, I want six. So I'm going to fold that in three. And I'm going to attach that there, and then I'm going to double it over. So next week marks the start of our first session in February. We are going to keep going for another couple of weeks, guys and girls. Um, hope you are still enjoying the show and our format. We try and mix it up as best we can. I'm going to do one more week of viewer's choice. And then I've kind of got three or four weeks lined out, coming into the season, uh, getting ready for the boxes, you know, a little bit of tackle talk. Um, some patterns that you know early season patterns for lakes and rivers that I want to throw in there <clears throat> along the way so next week we're going to do a uh, another viewer's choice so by all means during the week or even now stick up your, your suggestions of what you want to see what you want covered and we will get on and get them covered for you um, or let me know I'll say give me a shout during the week there's absolutely no problem I can certainly try and get through uh, as many as I can for you um so we're going to be here for the next couple of Saturday nights we will definitely keep it going into a room paddy's weekend till the season opens and then you know as the evenings start to stretch out people are going to be on the rivers and stuff like that so look at i love these evenings and you know i'm going to miss them i'm going to miss them if we're still in lockdown i'm going to miss them we'll definitely do some pop-ups and stuff like that along the way but um you know it, it's not going to be as consistent because everyone gets busy and so as the evening say the evenings dry out we're going to be on the river and doing different things so um there's uh, we, we'll be taking a little break for the summer months and then we'll be back here next winter uh, with a whole brand new fresh uh, live show and um, <clears throat> and um, good good suggestion Graham Connolly is looking for a check tread fly absolutely Graham that is a fantastic suggestion and we might just do that one um, okay so we got the tail two part tail we got pheasant, natural pheasant tail sitting on top of some 12 uh, and you want to make sure that's on top of it, guys, all right? Uh, some 12 glow bright, okay? Rib here is a fine uni miler. Again, if I was heading out to Loch Ool, and normally I'd always have a trip to Loch Ool. Now, look, look, I don't fish as many lakes now as I used to when I was living in Wicklow. Uh, we were an awful lot were involved in the Rattrum or the Roundwood anglers there. And... Um, you know, we used to fish an awful lot more lakes and head across to the Midlands and to the West an awful lot more, kind of since I moved to Kilkenny and lakes or not. But I still do a couple of trips to Ool and I get, I get an odd time to lean. I might get a carob an odd time. And, um, it, you know, this is this is one that has just so many good memories. Uh, great, great stuff. Um, but the natural hairs here, we're going to put in that body. Great point, Fly. Really is an absolute cracker. Especially if you're over on Corrib and we'd be fishing up around Ballin of Bain, uh, in around the rocks there and the truck feeding on caddis and stuff like that. It's it's an absolute belter to have with you. So we're going to wind that body up now. Form a nice taper to that body as you come up. Claret legs 11. Yeah. Send in any suggestions. I go back over this video again, as I always do, kind of on at some stage during the week. I sit down and, and uh, re watch it because there's an awful lot of comments I miss. And uh, I like to read back on the comments. And um, so do send in any suggestions you have. And uh, so kind of coming up three quarters way up that. Now, when you're ribbing with this fine mylar, don't put too much pressure on it. Just enough pressure to get it sink into that hair's ear. Um, if you put an awful lot of pressure on this fine of mylar, it, it goes that icy blue. Okay, and I don't want the icy blue in, in, in the body. We want that pearl green. If you put it too much pressure on that, as you can see there, it goes that kind of icy blue. Now you can't really see it. On there, but you know, most of these know what I mean. A murrah? Yeah, we can certainly have a look at a murrah. Um, murrah, should I say? <clears throat> uh, what we're going to do now is just a little bit of a brush so just when you're putting on that dubbin you don't have to over I want to get that hair's ear now to come out and so you give it a good brushing it's a lovely soft hair's ear and get it out past that and you can see the effect down that gives that fly it's almost like a hackle okay 
and again just similar to the to the previous hairs here we did you know when that gets wet it, it's kind of cloaked um <laughs> Paul, Paul Murphy that's a good one uh, <laughs> I like your not skills any suggestions on how to tie up the wife <laughs> good man Paul uh, no but I'll, I'll have a look at it Paul I'll have a look at it see if I can come up with a solution for you for next week uh, good good one um, right so what we got some here is some dark olive uh, pheasant tail is what we're going to use for a thorax cover here okay dark olive pheasant tail take off a nice chunk and probably got maybe Eight to ten. Fibres down that one. Now, we're going to do a little bit of a fold back on these. And actually, you know what? Just even by holding that in my hand, I know I'm probably a couple short. Uh, so I'm going to take another two or three there. I just beefed it up a little bit. <clears throat> now, we're going to fold back the legs on this one. Um when we finish the fly, okay? And and something that a lot of people have problems with is uh, Dave Donovan suggests uh, cable ties. Uh, they, they could work, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> and the Kevlar will do it too. Terry, you're right, and the Kevlar will keep her, keep her quiet. Um, I think my wife's at a table quiz tonight, so I, I'm safe enough now if I can select the wives off a little bit. And the rest of these could be in trouble now, lads, if there's any of them watching in. Um, okay, so... When I'm folding back the legs, proportions here are really, really key because I want to keep so, keep those natural tips. I don't want to cut them. <clears throat> I don't want to cut them. Um, so what I, what, the way I normally judge it is I put them in. When I'm touching the eye, the tips come back to where the body, the end of the full end of the body. Okay. And once I'm happy with that lint, I pick it up and I move it into where it's going to be tied. And I'm quite happy with the proportions then that when I fold it over and lap it back, they won't be too long. They won't be too short. They should come about half to three quarter way down the body. And that's exactly where I want them. Okay. So hold your fingers to the eye, the hook. And once they're the full length of the body, that's fine. Lift them up, move them down and place them in on top. And tie them in where they're, where they're going to be tied. Okay. Down the shank. So when I fold them over and fold them back, I should be about three quarters of the way down the body. How you doing, Jamie? Jamie Potts is on there. So trim off that bit of waste and get them tied in well again similar to our you know the foundation of the, the underbody when we get up to this stage too when you're you know make sure everything's really well tied in these bigger flies you tend to rush things a little bit and i'm definitely guilty of that and when you go to plan a whip finish something like that then at the end it's um you're spinning off okay now we're going to put a hackle in here so here i've got a hen grizzle die chatrousse you can see there Nice hen grizzle, Deutsche Truce. I think I got that one off Pat Nolan. Um, <laughs> Robbie, Robbie, you man. Uh, 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 <laughs> that brought a whole new meaning to fly time porn. Uh, so I'm going to se select my hackle here. So bear with me a minute here now. I know I, I, I normally would have something selected. So we're going to get something fairly beefy enough. Um, it's got a nice bit of lint to it. Here we go. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, and I'm going to tie that in there. And leave that out the back there for a minute. Now, for our actual thorax here, what I've got here now is a mixture. Uh, I was trying to think today how I would suggest you guys to mix this. Um, so what I've got a mixture here is natural rabbit, just, just natural olive rabbit oven, a nice fine mix. And then I've got this mix of squirrel or synthetic. It's from Smoky Mountain Anglers in, um, it's from Smoky Mountain Anglers in Tennessee. When I was out there uh, the year before last, I got this lovely packet of oven. Uh, and you can see it's a synthetic, but it has a lovely blue and dark kind of blue. Um, Mix through it, okay? So it's it's not difficult to dub on, to go on and say, in small amounts if I was working behind the bead of a nymph. But when I'm working on a, a, a larger section, I want a much larger section like this, it can be a little bit, because it's more of a synthetic material. So what I tend to do is take a little pinch of it, mix it in with the rabbit, and the rabbit just helps me, um, the rabbit just helps me get a, a much better dub on it. Small pinch. Now, 
if you had a synthetic olive mix in a bit of uv and rabbit it will get you fairly close to this okay um looks like we <laughs> trout weed trout weed grain that's what we're going to call this one trout weed all right get a little bit of a mix that together and uh, way too much for the moment Dub that on there. Should have really used a little bit of wax there, it would help with that. Um, put a decent thorax there on that nymph to get your proportions right. Still, some good suggestions coming in for next week. Um, Catskill the Burka is looking for a uh, comparison, yeah. Absolutely, Comparadon's a very popular little fly, and and you're not the only one that struggles with the deer with the deer hair wing. Um, cat life. I struggled for a long time with the two till I just spent enough time on them to just about master it. And uh, we can certainly look at something like that. So once I've got that nice, as you can see, quite generous, um, thorax in there, I'm then going to take my hackle and I'm going to wind it up the fly. Now, I have a hackle pliers here. It's not the greatest one. I cannot for the life of me, since last Saturday night, I cannot for the life of me find me good hackle pliers. So this hackle could slip three or four times before I actually managed to get this fly completed. Uh, so bear with me. I uh, don't know where the hell me good one went after. Um, and it wasn't even a good one. It was one of those cheap ones you get for three or four quid, but it just had the perfect tension, the perfect, uh, one of those ones that was just absolutely ideal, using it for years. And do you think I can find that? It could be up now and, Lily's kitchen or Tommy's sports car or some bloody thing, I'd say. Stuck to something uh, up in the playroom. But anyway, a couple of turns. We're done fine that time of that nice um, of that nice hackle. I'm then going to, before I do anything else, get in there and just trim the top of those out. No need for them. Don't want them there. Just for a moment. And then with the rest, I'm going to get my brush. Still some great suggestions coming in. That's good. Hope everyone is enjoying the shows. If anybody ever does have any uh, constructive criticism, I welcome it all. If anybody has some, any suggestions along the way, how to make things better, worse, whatever it may be, uh, please do share them across. This is, I think this group has kind of grown into, you know, it, it's it's more than just uh, coming on here to watch me play flies. It's a social, a social kind of gathering for, for everyone online here to share. So I'm just going to fold over that nice dark olive. Okay, just fold that over the top. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Graham. Yeah, I must Google that, Graham, actually. I must Google uh, um, say soccer wells on there. And there's something I was actually thinking of doing tonight, soccer with some daddies. Uh, and we might do a daddy next week, okay? Uh, there's lots of great daddy patterns out there. So once I've got that folded over the top, as you can see, all right, now I want to fold these legs back. There's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, you can, you know, break them in half and then try to get them back either side. Just spread them out. Get your thumb in against it. Uh, get your thumb in against it and fold them all back like so, okay? Get them all to go back. And you can see they're perfect length for the proportion of that fly. Back half to three quarter. Um... <laughs> You're on Sherlock. That's a good one. Give give a free beer to give a free beer. I tell you now, lads and ladies, when this whole COVID thing is over and we can all get travelling again and all that, anybody that wants to is more than welcome to come up here for an evening's fly time with me. Have a I have a few spare beds in the house, a few spare couches. You're more than welcome on a Saturday night to come up here and sit up here with me, and we'll have a bottle of beer, we'll have a chat, and uh, we'll do this face to face. Um, anyone's more than welcome. So I just folded it all back with the thumb. Couple of good wraps in there to secure them back. And that's the way I like it. See? So we don't go from side to side. Um, absolutely, Eugene, yeah. The, um, and I think that Dave, I think, you know, Dave Dunham just said he has a, a hackle pliers there from John Oliver for the last 30 years. And, you know, you get used to hackle pliers. And um, this old thing, I'd say I probably bought it for two euros somewhere. And do you think like for all week? And it drove me nuts. I was on lake flies all week. And I spent half the week 
breaking hackles, dropping hackle players. Um, oh, jeez, it just drove me nuts. And I have three or four of them downstairs of a, of a Cortarelli, which are really good, but I just find them a little bit heavy because I'm so used to the other one. Um, I have a J voice that came with this J voice, uh, a J voice, beautiful handmade. Um, good man, Dave is on anyway. Ken, Ken Woodward, uh, good man, Ken. Ken will be on for that Saturday night too from British Columbia. You're more than welcome, Ken. But definitely, let's. If this summer, if this summer, if we get air a chance or an opportunity in the summer, um, I'm going to host a fly train evening here in the house. Everybody's welcome. I'll throw on the barbecue. I'll get a few bottles of beer, probably more than a few. And um, anybody that wants to come along, come up and do a little bit of fishing. And we'll sit up for the evening. We'll tie a few flies and uh, we'll have a bit of crack. So something to look forward to, maybe, hopefully, please God. Uh, so what I'm going to do here now is just a little bit of black marker, just covering that Kevlar, a little tiny touch on the actual head itself, and then colour in my uh, thread. Don't forget, coming up next, we've got that Loch Sheelan wet fly. So if you've got any mates or anyone else out there that fishes Loch Sheelan and you want to see something that has um, get into keg, geez, Robert, we could be in trouble. Huh? Uh, Peter's lads in the absolutely, yeah. Um... <laughs> um, did you check your pockets well don't care that's what I always say to a friend a good friend of mine I'm not going to say any names now but he has a tendency to lose things now and again and uh, you know and he normally turn up in the most obvious of places after a day or so And but one of the first things that I always say to him Kieran Sherlock is that um, did, did you check your pockets <laughs> but anyway so right do a little whip finishing there get in and take away that now if you do rather or if one of those hackles it's just not right in place. And you can see that one there that I'm touching. It's sticking right down the middle of the underthrow. And I'm just not mad about it there. Catch it. Get rid of it. Okay, you got loads there. If you do really like them on the side, well then just get in there and take out one or two out of the middle. Scissors. Prop them up. Slide down and just nick them off. If, you, if you're really fussy with that. There you go. And I can tell you, lock ooh, lock lean, lads. Uh, hook there, Liam. Sorry, the hook there is an 830 uh, Trout Classic Lower Long Size 10. Uh, Loch Lean, Loch Ool. That's been one of the best name parents I've ever fished on Loch Ool for years. Got me biggest trout ever on Loch Ool. Uh, I know lots of people that are fishing that on Lean. And in that size, maybe a little bigger, uh, definitely, um, definitely shielding anywhere. I know Carob, it's worked well. Uh, really good nymph pattern. Lovely natural boogie look about it. Take it for a mayfly nymph. Take it for an olive nymph. Take it for a caddis. Uh, lots of colour. Lots of movement there in that as well. Um, and a really pattern that I've tied a lot over the years. I've fished a lot over the years. And um, definitely one. An absolute humdinger of a pint fly. <laughs> There's no other way of describing it. A humdinger of a pint fly. Um, there you go. Hope you've enjoyed that one. And all the, those lake anglers out there. Uh, catch, catch a couple of nice spring fish. And on, on that one there, focus is a little bit better there, actually. I might bring that camera, I moved that camera a little bit earlier on, and the focus kind of went off a little bit. Um, there we go, you can get a really nice visual of that there now. Uh, thanks, Arthur, thanks, Sarah, thanks, Graham, uh, Brennan Dooley. Um, thanks, Graham. You can see the way that rib comes through that brushed out body, lovely. You know, it, it's. Um, try, there we go. Comes out through it, lovely. Nice and subtle. Those dark olive. Um, anyway, someone's going to win all these flies tomorrow because we've, we've got a few. I did a few before I came on. Didn't do the woven one too well, but uh, got a few nice flies there. Uh, you can see a nice, nice selection of dries and nymphs scattering up there now from today. Um, <clears throat> uh, good question, Dennis. Apps, yeah, would I ever let it? You know what? Uh, it's just one of those flies that I fish in a fast intermediate. Um, I have lead and I've put beads on it, but I've never really caught any fish on them. Um, never really. Uh, yeah, you could put a bit of lead on it if you want, but I don't know. It's just just something I've never, never, like I've, I've had beads. I've tied, I've tied heaps of those um, over the years. And about, say, six or eight years ago when I was doing a lot of fishing in the Midlands, I, you know, I had rows of them, like different color tags, different color boots, different color hackles and ribs, and I put beads on them. I was always that one, that exact one there that I tied was the one that always caught the fish. For whatever it is, whatever way it swims, I don't know. Or maybe it's, you know, and I often think that the psychology of, a part of the psychology of fly fishing is, you know, once you get a fish on that particular fly or that, I mean, myself and Hubert had a really good conversation about this the other day in relation to um, the body of a silver dabbler. 
where you can buy, you know, very similar materials to one that we both like, but yet, you know, you don't have this personal confidence in, in that, um, in that, um, in that other material, even though it's nearly almost identical, you know, there's just some kind of psychological block there. And I think it's the same with that fly. If I put a little bit of lead in there or something, just, you know, if we don't get a fish on it quick enough or early enough, I think, oh, I wonder is it just because that lead makes it swim a bit different? I don't know. It's just, um, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, but uh, no, that's, that's the pattern. That's the one. You can definitely try it, Dennis, with a bit of lead. and love to hear your feedback on that one up in Loch Lean in um, Journey Olives and stuff like that. But I can remember a day on, on Loch Ool a good few years back when there was a rise. There was a lot of fish activity. There was a hatch of olives come off it. And um, myself and another chap were in the boat. And I I'll tell you one thing, we didn't have enough of those flies in our box. They just destroyed them. Absolutely destroyed them. It was unbelievable. Um, so I hope everyone has a bit of success in that one. It's a really good pattern. Now, we're going to move on. We got one more fly for you, folks. Uh, this is the one for Shailen. It's a, a beast of a fly. This one. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. It's a brute. Um, good fly. Looks great. I haven't fished Shailen much. To be quite honest, I've only ever fished it twice, three times, probably in my life. Um, but I do tie a lot of flies for Shailen. And this is one that I do get asked for regularly. Now, someone's going to have to help me out here. And I'm really hoping someone does. Years and years and years ago, I was asked for this fly. And I was told the name of it. But do you think I can remember the name of this pattern? So when I get tying it, if someone can please tell me the name of it, I would very much appreciate it. And I might even rustle that person up a little price. Uh, just going to make a bit of room here now, if you don't mind, for a second. Tidy up. Um, so, <clears throat> to get up some more materials here. So as we all know, Loch Sheelan has, is probably one of the best wild trout fisheries on the planet. There's, you know, for the quality of fish, the size of the fish, uh, it is phenomenal. What comes out of that lake and, and, and um, you know, beautiful, beautiful quality of trout. So, and it is renowned to be fishing large flies on a lake. So, I know a good few people had asked me to do a um, size eight dabblers and stuff like that. Uh, some, some big, you know, big stuff for Sheelan. So, this is one I've tied several times. And um, first fly that came to mind, and I spent all week trying to remember the name. It's been on my tip of the tongue. Um, yes, absolutely, Kieran Sherlock. Uh, if you don't have the confidence in the fly, um, you don't fish it the same way. Absolutely, totally agree with you. Um, totally agree with you. But anyway, so this fly was the first fly that came to mind. I have tied it a thousand times. Um, but um, it was on the name of it, on the tip of my tongues uh, all week. And do you think I can think of it? No. So what we got here is a B850 long shank size 8. Thanks, Eddie. Eddie Cores on there. It's a big hook. I'm going to move that camera to make sure we get this whole fly in. Okay. Now, bear with me for a few moments here now till I just uh, pull out it. And, uh, okay, bit of Kevlar. That's nice shot. Same as the last time, that underbody is fair support. Okay. So you can skip it now and jump on down like that and start working away and, and get your materials on. Get halfway through that fly, put a bit of pressure on a hackle or whatever it may be, and next thing that whole thing will become, it'll start spinning around the hook. So get your underbody in there, good and tight. Spend a couple of seconds winding on that thread. Hope everybody's enjoying the evening. If anybody has any comments or suggestions or um, contributions, Please do show them across. Now, what I use in the tail of this one is I have a bit of melanistic cock pheasant tail feather. Okay. Um, now, to some, to me, this is a really blacky olive. Okay. And that's why you use it in this one. Now, whether this is the the original pattern, uh, the original tying, I'm not sure. It could be just natural pheasant tail. But I was sent a fly a long time ago, um, which was this fly. Uh, to copy and this was the closest colour I had to it so it's natural uh, melanistic there is a kind of a dark olive black colour on it okay and this is what I've used I don't use that tail feather for anything else only this fly and I'm going to tie that in there not a big massive long tail secured and well up the body
<laughs> David. And uh, David, yeah. Good man. Good man, Dave. Hey, Alan Kenny. Alan Kenny's on there. Hi, everybody. Uh, or hi, Alan, should I say. Hope you're keeping well. Now, for a rib here, we are going to use some uni mylar. This is size 14. And we're going to have a gold rib on this one. So first person, I just thought of the prize that I'm going to give out for, for, for this flight. First person to give me, there is a name on this flight. This is not something I made. This is an old pattern. Um, first person to give me the correct name on this flight. When we do have that social evening down here in Kilkenny for a bit of flight time, the person that gives me the name of this flight um, will have free beer. Free beer for the night. I will buy them whatever they want for that entire evening. Um, where am I going with a cape? Okay, black seals for black dart. Dark claret seals for. We're going to put some on the body. Now, here we need a bit of. Um, Alan was watching the villa, the villa match. Just on there now. Well, we're just doing a, a lock style fly here, Alan, for um, Sheila. So I'm going to wax up that because there's. Um, we got some seals for it going here. It helps. Put on a bit of claret seals for. Now I'm sure this fly tied in smaller sizes and or even in this size used in the right conditions on other lakes would, would work quite well. But I get asked for this fly an awful lot of shooting. And we start our body. Bit of meat in it, but not too excessive. A shimmy, is that uh <laughs> Pat McCarty says uh, that Pat McCarty says you better hope I don't know the name but um, be two of us and that's so Pat um, do you think that's the name of it um, a shimmy Declan is it <laughs> Dave too he's going to get some answer now well that's what I'm going to do so whoever can give me the correct answer, because I, I think I know once again. Well, I can Google it, because I had actually Googled this, and I found, I think I have an old book downstairs somewhere that I actually found the tie-in of this, the original tie-in of this particular fly. Um, so whoever does, gets to come to that whole evening. Um, when all the lockdown is over and everything else is clear, during the summer, please God, it'll more likely be late summer, uh, hopefully, if not next spring, whenever it's going to be. Well, then um, you can see what happened there as soon as I just didn't put on any wax. See what happened to that? That's um, seals for. Put on a bit of wax. Leave nice gap up there near the head. Ace of spades, uh, Graham Radigan. No, it's not an ace of spades. Okay, next thing we're going to do is put in a hackle. Okay, so we got a dark claret, kind of claret, uh, not necessarily so dark, um, but sh body hackle in there. We need something with a bit of, bit of length to it. Just bear with me a second now. Can I root through this and get down to where some of the good long stuff is. Not too long, but um, we want something that's going to be, yeah, that one probably do okay. Macketeer flight. I don't know, Brennan. Montana. No, it's not Montana. Hello, Alessandro. Alessandro's on there. The gaff. Uh, don't know. It's not that either. Um, Tom Mankertel. Um So I'm taking saddle fitter. I have a funny feeling it begins with O. Something was ringing in me all oh, fucking week that it begins with O. Now I'm going to take this down the body. Make sure when you choose this feather, it is long enough to get you down the body so you're not skimping. And I know of some absolutely cracking fish that have been caught in Loch Sheen with this fly over the last two or three years. Because I get sent these lovely pictures from guys that get a few flies off me of these beautiful trout. I'm sitting on the desk tying flies on a Wednesday evening up to my eyes, whatever, you know, two kids running on my feet, 
and um, next thing I get this lovely, lovely picture of a big Irish wild brown trout. Thanks for the flies, P. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Really puts in good humour. Um, so, <clears throat> here we go. Yeah, Kieran Flaherty, I think you're, I think you're, uh, whether it's either the Lockhardy or it's the, I think maybe Dave Toohey as well. I'm going to have to Google it, lads. Uh, but th there's definitely two front runners. Um, <clears throat> definitely two, uh, <laughs> definitely two front runners there for a free night out in Kilkenny when the lockdown lifts. Um, so I'm going to brush that back. Get a nice taper back on this. Hack up. As you can see. Make sure everyone's well secured. In. Lovely. Lovely body of a fly. Um, Dennis Goulin says, not a lock already. Have you any ideas what that is, Dennis? So, sorry, um, uh, Robert Flaherty, Kieran Flaherty, uh, Dennis Goulin has just ruled you out, but maybe, um, <coughs> maybe, uh, Dave Toohey, the ombudsman. Am I right? Pronounce that right, Dave? Um, <laughs> right, there's some there's some very funny people on there now giving some great suggestions. Okay, going to put a cloak on it. So I've got a bit of bronze mallard here. A nice fine bronze mallard. Again, very important when you're doing a fly like this <coughs> is to have it everything. Um, Jordan O'Hara. An Orkley. I have a funny feeling Oh, I can't believe I don't remember it. And unfortunately, I had all these flies saved. Pictures, names, and everything. And this is a really sad story. Just to make the lockdown even worse. This is what happened to me a couple of weeks ago. I had everything saved. I had folders of years of research saved on um, on my laptop. Um, I mean, there was a serious amount of stuff. Every If I tied a pattern for somebody, I photographed it, stored it on file. So if someone ever come back to me and said... Will you tie that? You know that apparently you tied from five years ago. You wouldn't do me up a dozen of them and not be able to remember it. I had everything recorded, you know. Lots of files, not just pictures of fishing stuff, personal stuff, work stuff, previous stuff from old jobs and all that. Years and years ago. Anyway, bit of a computer issue before Christmas. Lost everything. Absolutely everything. Every picture I had, all the world championships, uh, all my fly collection, uh, stuff I'd saved up, articles that I wrote. Um, everything whoosh, gone can't be recovered went to a specialist centre in Dublin with the software can't be recovered nothing was dropped just everything just stopped working one day um, hard drives and laptops and the whole lot gone oh my god it was just I don't even want to talk about it let's do it honestly, with you. so no one, asked, no, no one give me any advice no one give me any suggestions I'm <laughs> just offloading on his there a little bit um, so putting a cloak on it but the cloak doesn't go back quite as far as normal, um, as you can see, okay? We don't go back the full length of the hook. Make sure that's secured in really well up there, all right? So everyone's gone, lost the whole lot, lost all my files. Other than that, I'd have been able to go onto these files, or onto my files, and find this, find this pattern and the name of it, who I would have tied it for, um, the whole shebang. But it's all gone. So now we've got a much broader, um, much broader bronze mallard feather. As you can see again, steamed it before it came on to get it um, absolutely perfect. We need a lot of length in this one, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out again about an inch, halfway down the feather, an inch to three quarters of an inch of uh, bronze mallard. I'm going to split that in half. And I'm going to stack it. And I'm going to place that on the table there for a second. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to take another similar section. And I'm going to stack it on top of it again. So you, in order to do this wing, your bronze mallard has to be perfect. So give it a steam beforehand. Make sure it's all nice and fresh. Now, there was an underwing put into one of a variation of this one. Um, <laughs> um, just Alan Kenny is on there said he'll meet us for a drink that night, but no whiskey. I wouldn't be that fond of their whiskey, Alan. You know me, you know. Um, only not 10. 
But there was an under, um, a bit of an underwing put on this fly one time, and it worked quite well as well. No, I'm not going to add. Actually, look what I can. Do you know what? I think I have it here somewhere. If I have it here, I do have it here. So you know what? I'm going to put in a little bit of an underwing here, and this basically is fly box. It's a bit of UV polar claret from fly box. Okay, and I put it in some of my silver dabblers and stuff like that. Um, and it was a guy asking for a little bit of flashing and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I put a little bit of this in on the wing. I don't want to, something to overpower the fly in any sense. Um, but yeah, just to have a little bit of flash in there. So we put a little bit of flash in there now at that stage. I wasn't going to, but that's not the original pattern. Um, but we put it in there, something we have there. Then I take my three stacked strips of bronze mallard. Just get them back on top. And I place them flat on top. So you can see they're going to be flat. Okay, not, uh, not folded in any way. So we're doing a very similar wing style here to what we did on the grey flag. Pinch down over. Trap it in. Couple of slow turns. And then tighten up. So again, we get that similar look. You can see we've got the triangulated look on top. Good long wing. Okay. I'd even go longer with that wing. So I'm just going to unwind a little bit. Leave the last turn in there. Take off the tension. Slip it down the fly a little bit. Put back on the tension. And get in the That's much better. Now. You can see the wing on that. Okay. Lovely job. Really happy with that. Take away that. And now we've put in a couple of really good turns of tight to hold all that bronze matter in place and get ready for the next stage of our tiny display. Okay. Now, jungle cock cheeks. I'm going to add in two jungle cock cheeks there now. Just reading some of the suggestions. I don't think anyone's overly sure about what the name of this fly is. I have definitely researched it over the years and found the original tie-in somewhere along the way in either a book or online and I had it stored on my computer till I lost everything. Um, you know, it might take a few phone calls maybe during the week to to figure out the, the true name of it again. Uh, so two jungle cock cheeks going back along. I'd say it'd be a fair fly for a, a, a um, salmon down in Loch Lean or over in the west of Ireland too. Two jungle cock cheeks. And this one here on the side is just didn't quite sit in the position I want, so I'll just. <clears throat> Attach that back in there. And a couple of nice tight turns to make sure it's well locked in. Now, we're going to put Grizzle Hackle up there. Grizzle hackle, well secured in. <clears throat> what I normally do now is I put a little bit of red marker because I put so much, um, so much tread up there, making sure everything's secured in. I'm going to put a little bit of red dubbing in there as well, but I'm not going to overdress it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put, just, just color that in a little bit of red as well, <clears throat> and then I will get some seals for it. just normal red seals for it. a little bit of wax onto that. Um, Tease it up a little bit. And the fly is finished the very same as the stimulator head. Take your grizzle hacker. Come up that body. I'll come up that head. Tight off. 
Anybody? Anybody got it? Kenny McKeever. Yeah, dark mackerel. I was actually looking at the mackerel flies. Uh, that Scottish, the Scottish fly you're, you're uh, talking there about Kenny McKeever. It's not. It's not. That's not the name of it. Um, I will. I will. I tell you by hook or by crook. I will have that name of this fly by next week. Um, if someone hasn't already guessed it. But um, for Lock Sheelan, there was certainly a lot of show caught in that one um, over the last two or three seasons, even longer. Been tying up for a good few years now. Um, just to remind everyone, the hook on that one, we don't have them in the shop or in. It is an 850 size 8. And the Camazan 850 size 8. I know Pat Nolan has them down there because that's where we're about. Um, a little bit of a brush out. Small bit of a kick back on those grizzly hackles. And there we have it. That is the whatever it's called. Um, not a mallard and claret. Now, what a fly. Beautiful fly. Uh, say it's some swimmer. Um, has everything going for it. It is a big fly. Like that is, you know what I mean? That is, that is a really, that is a, is a big, big fly. Um, I'm going to just push back the camera slightly bit now just to give you a little bit of an idea of the proportions of that one. But like, um, that's a size 8. Uh, if you look at this size 10 I have here uh, in comparison to it. Um, yeah, Kieran Sherlock, it is, you know, that's, it is a, it is a mix. There's that nymph. Now, that nymph is a size ten long shank, um, and you can see there's 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 a big difference in that. And um, that's a beast of a fly. Beautiful fly. Lovely fly to tie. I do really enjoy tying flies like that. Um, it's a real fishy looking fly. Um, it does Ricky Woods. It has the dark macro look about it. Um, but for some reason, I think that no, it could be the same fly. Obviously, the dark macro is a Scottish fly. This could be something that. Um, you know, Irish guys have taken on and they call it something completely different. Uh, but it is. It's an absolute belter of a fly. So I've never had the pleasure of catching trout on it. But I certainly get asked for a lot up in, off the shielding guys, some shielding guys, um, and guys visiting shielding. And um, it is a beauty. And I'd say fishing that, even the carob or places like that, smaller sizes or whatever, uh, yeah, certainly you'd have no problem catching fish. Lovely colour combinations. Um, lovely structure to the fly. Um, and there we go, folks. So what plan we now? Quarter past ten, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> a stimmy, right? Dennis going at a very, very good Denny. Uh, Denny, a stimmy and a dabbler had that <laughs> baby. <yes. laughs> but there we go. Look at guys and girls. Thanks so much to everybody for watching tonight. I hope um, you all really enjoyed it. I certainly did. I love coming on here and sharing the little bit of knowledge I have, which is reading some of your fantastic comments and your contributions um as usual thanks for everybody for watching it if anybody has any questions or queries during the week uh please feel free to send us a message give us a ring um send me an email whatever way you want to do it about gear or fly patterns or anything that's bothering you give me an old bell love the old chat and uh, we will gladly do my best to help you out thanks everybody for all your su continued support with scary fly um that's the reason why we're here every saturday night because we get to keep going because of your support um don't forget we'll be back here next saturday night at half eight viewers choice last week of viewers choice after that then we've got a little bit more structure coming um got some stuff we want i really want to cover which is for the start of a new season uh, a little bit of tackle talk in there as well. We're going to throw in a bit of tackle talk. Uh, lined up a few guest tires for the start of the new season. So we got we got six or eight weeks left to go, whatever it may be. Um, four or five, six, probably six weeks left to go to, to St. Patrick's Day. Then we're going to make a decision um, on what we'll do for a while, depending on the lockdown. So really hope you all enjoyed the night, the flies. It's going to be up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, I will do a little competition for all these flies tomorrow. At some stage, I will put up a question based on tonight and uh whoever gets the correct answer we'll get all the flies posted out to them um dave to your spot prize will be on the way to you monday if i figure out the name of that fly i will share which is next week and uh, look at have a great saturday night everyone uh thanks for watching thanks a million for all your support really really appreciate it and if you ever need it or um fishing ways or fly time ways please check out www.pascarifly.com good night everybody stay safe see you next saturday night